Welcome to Standard & Poor's first loan market overview clip. I'm Steve Miller, a member of S&P's Leverage Commentary and Data Team, a unit of S&P that's not affiliated with the Ratings Group. For the next five minutes or so, I'll walk you through a review of recent loan market trends before winding up with some themes to watch for over the next month. Before we start, please know that you can follow LCD on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. More on that at the end of the presentation. This next chart's one you've all seen before. It's a disclaimer that's long and quite detailed. Please read it over at your leisure. Now to the topic at hand. The secondary lost about a point and a half in mid-February as loans weakened in response to the pig situation that also spooked the broader market. With the crisis abating, the loan market bounced back and even managed to eke out a small gain for, for uh, February as a whole. The reason for this resilience, supportive technicals and improving fundamental conditions. Technical conditions were bolstered in February by strong repayment rates. As well, money continues to flow into the loan mutual funds. Improving fundamentals were seen in the default rate, which eased again in February and has now receded about two points from its November highs. As for new de deal flow, there has certainly been a lot of activity this year. Most of it, however, is centered on exits, recaps, and refinancings. True new mergers and acquisitions-driven volume, however, remains scarce. Finally, after February's mid-month scare, market players seem less confident and more worried about the potential for exogenous shocks. This next chart shows the average price of LCD's flow name composite, a measure of the 15 largest, most liquid loans. As the big V to the right makes clear, the market has largely clawed back the devastating losses of late 2008 and early 2009. In recent months, it has stabilized, mostly moving sideways. Rather than responding to overall market conditions, names responded to earnings news and sector trends and other idiosyncratic factors. Here's that same composite for, for just the two months of 2010. The data show that prices were largely unchanged in February. After a rough, rough patch in the middle of the month in response to broader capital markets weakness caused by sovereign debt worries, the market bounced back, bolstered by strong technical demand and a raft of better than expected earnings reports. Looking ahead, players expect prices to largely move, move sideways following the lead of high yield and equities. This chart shows the monthly return of the Standard & Poor's LSTA index, a broad measure of loan market returns that we calculate in partnership with the Loan Syndications and Trading Association. The main point here is that the loan market managed to eke out a gain in February. The S&P LSTA index was up 0.28%, bringing the year-to-date gain to 2.32%. The overall loan market has now posted 14 straight monthly advances. Over that period, it is up a whopping 55%. Now we turn to market technicals. This graph to the left illustrates new issue volume. As impressive as the increases have been in recent months, for loan accounts it's been a case of water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. The primary has seen activity, but the vast majority of deal flow has been for refinancings, recapitalizations, and exits. True new issue volume from M&A trades has been in short supply, however. That brings us to the graph on the right, which displays the amount of institutional term loans outstanding over time. With the repayments re persisting at strong rates, the universe of loan paper continues to shrink by about 2% so far this year after declining 11% last year. This inventory squeeze continues to underpin secondary price levels and wet demand for new issue paper. It's not just supportive technicals that have underpinned the loan market. Fundamentals have also been improving. This chart gives a classic view of loan market default rates. It does so by dividing the amount of loans, loan defaults in any given 12-month period by the amount outstanding at the beginning of the period to give a trend line. After an unprecedented rise in 2009, default rates have started to recede. The reason is threefold. First, many of the weakest issuers in the most troubled sectors have already been claimed by bankruptcy. Second, nearly two in five issuers have executed a kick-the-can-down-the-road transaction, such as an amend to extend, a bond for loan takeout, or covenant relief. Third, there's been significant earning improvement. Among the Standard Poor's LSTA issuers that fi filed so far this year, EBITDA was up 10% on average in the fourth quarter. To wrap up, then, some final points. First, the demand for loans remains muscular as a result of high repayment rates and inflows into the loan funds. Second, the calendar of true new issue volume remains weak. 
Third, private equity firms and issuers are focused on financial engineering deals. Fourth, issuers continue to create financial flexibility through amend to extends and bond takeouts. And finally, most participants expect default rates to drop into the mid-single digits by year-end. And indeed, the market is now pricing in a default rate of about 5.5%, right in line with consensus expectations. That brings us to the end of our overview. I hope you found it informative. For more information on the loan market, you can check in with us on the web or via LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. The links for each is in the description of, for this video. Please visit us. We plan to update this video analysis monthly, and we'll have other videos as well. Thanks.